Hi everyone. Uh, this video is going to be a little different than some of the others. I'm not going to use the notepad. Um, instead, I'm, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about uh, plotting in uh, Python. And I assume that most of you haven't uh, seen the quiver plots before, which I'm using here, which you're going to have to use for your homework. So I just want to take five minutes and cover the quiver plots in case this is something you're having a hard time figuring out. Uh, or even if you're not, just to familiarize yourself with it. So what I have here on the left is a Jupyter notebook uh, where I make some of these plots. And then on the right I have a couple uh, of the documentation from matplotlib, which is the plotting uh, uh, module that we'll use in Python today. So first over here, uh, I just want to step through this code and tell you what the different parts are and highlight the two sort of new things probably that you're unfamiliar with. So I start out as I do in pretty much any Python code and I have uh, my imports at the top and note that I'm importing numpy and I'm importing uh, the plotting tool from matplotlib.pyplot um, and I also have something here to import three-dimensional plots it doesn't look like I'm using that here so I think that's uh, unnecessary so we could uh, likely just comment that out and we'd be okay. Um, so this first example, I have pressure-driven flow in a slit. So this is a rectangular uh, a channel with no ends, so just a, just a slit here. And I have height 1, delta p1, the viscosity 1, length 1. Um, all that's just uh, for plotting. I could vary those. And what I'm going to do first is I'm going to create what's called a mesh grid. So let me comment out uh, uh, this stuff. I don't know if it'll let me do that in Jupyter. I'm used to a different text editor. So let me just comment this out really quick to show you what happens. So when I run this, um, I defined some number of points n. And what I have in here are two arrays. So I have numpy.zeros uh, and I can print that out and show you what that looks like. That's just an array of zeros. And the other thing I have is a linearly spaced array, which I'm using linspace for. And that gives me something from minus h to h with 21 points. And I picked an odd number so that I would uh, you know, have even spacing between here. That's why I picked 21. And I picked 20 because I know it would go from minus 1 to 1, so this gives me nice round numbers there. But you could pick any number you want. And what I'm doing is I'm calling this mesh grid function. And so if you scan over here for a second and look at this part of my screen, I have the documentation for mesh grid. And to show you how I get there, by the way, if I just Google numpy mesh grid, the first part is from the numpy manual. Okay, so that's how I get there. And so numpy mesh grid, it tells me that it takes these different arguments here and it takes arrays and then it has some other options. And so what it does is it takes 1D arrays representing the different coordinates of a grid. And what it does is it fills out a two-dimensional array uh, with all those 1D arrays. So I can print um, uh, Y and show you what that looks like. So what you see here um, is that uh, uh, Y is a bunch of zeros and Z If you scroll down here, now takes minus 1, minus 1, all the way across, minus 0.9, all the way across, minus 0.7, all the way across. It's kind of hard to see with 21 points. Let me reduce this down to like 5 points, and you can see what's going on. So now I have just a 5 by 5. So I have my two arrays, 0, and then minus 1, minus 0.5, 0, 0.5, and 1. And this gives me back two different arrays, one which has zeros, and the other which goes from minus 1, minus 0.5, 0, 0.5, and 1. All right? And so this is just, this mesh grid function is just uh, copying uh, these arrays in, in this manner for me. All right? So that's all that that, that mesh grid's doing right there. So now I define uh, V as uh, this velocity field. And note that the velocity field depends on Z but it doesn't depend on y. And 
w is just a bunch of zeros. So v here, this is my velocity in the y direction, and w is my velocity in the z direction. Sometimes we say v is uh, vy. Well, there's this convention in fluid mechanics to say u is vx, uh, v is vy, and w is vz. So there's this convention. So that's why I'm using v and w. And now I come down here to make a plot. And the first thing I do is I make this figure and I define some resolution so it'll make it big enough. And I can come down here and show you what the figure looks like. And this first two parts is I'm just drawing lines. So I'm saying at minus, from minus 0.02 to 0.04, draw a line at minus h and draw a line at h. And I make it a black line and I make it a certain line width. Okay, and then I can add some labels on there. So I can add a z and a y. And now what I want to do is put on my plot. And I'm going to use quiver. All right. And you come over here and look at quiver. And quiver takes four things. It takes x, y, u, and v. So x <coughs> is one direction. And y is another direction. And u is my v in the x direction. And v here is my velocity in the y direction. And importantly, if we come down and look at the parameters, it says x and y need to either be 1D or 2D array-like. All right, and so I made them 2D. Um, uh, it says that if x and y are 1D, but u and v are 2D, then x and y are expanded to 2D using this piece. All right, and again, u and v are 1D or 2D array-like. Right, and so now I call this quiver plot, and what quiver basically does is it plots an arrow um, where x and y define the locations of my arrow, and u and v determine the direction and the magnitude. So they determine the, the vector plot. And so if you go back and think what I had when I printed, you know, print uh, y and print z, okay, and you look at what those are, and this tells me I have something at 0, minus 1, 0, minus 1. It looks like that's redundant. Uh, there. I don't think it will be uh, down here, but so, uh, you know, so I have this whole array of zeros and ones, right, and that's plotting there. And again, it looks like that one's redundant, but I just did mesh grid out of force of habit. Okay, so now I plot it, and what it does is it went through and it picked that zero and the different points I picked, um, and one of them is right on the boundary there, um, but it has a velocity of zero. So if I print uh, print v, you'll see that the velocities are zero at the top and bottom, all right? And it's printing all along that direction that I that I wanted. So in this case, we should try this. This is maybe a little nervous to try, but I'll, I'll try it. Um, we didn't need mesh grid probably. I can say y is numpy dot zeros endpoints, and z is numpy dot lin space minus h to h number of points. Uh, didn't like that. So, I don't know what it is about that it doesn't like. Oh, maybe it's because w. w is numpy dot zeros number of points. Ah, that did work. Okay, so it turns out I don't need mesh grid for that guy. I'm okay. I just am plotting the one dimension. Okay, so now what I'm going to take here then is increase my number of points back to 21. And booyah, now I get this nice uh, profile. Okay, so there you go. So that's uh, the one dimensional plot of uh, pressure driven flow in a slit. Now, what if I want to have something that has two dimensions? Now I'm going to need this mesh grid. And you're going to see that when I have this variation here, y and z um, are going to be at these different points and it's going to matter. Um, what's going on here. So he, now I'm going to plot the flow around a sphere. And you notice I've got this uh, uh, sphere that I put in here, and I'm just taking a projection. So I'm just taking a slice through the x equals 0 plane. So I have y and z plotted here, but I have the x and 0 plane. And I'm going to again do these plots. So again, I have something very similar. I have the number of points, x is numpy zeros, and I had to shift it by 10 to the minus 16, I think, because there's a singularity uh, in the middle, and that caused a problem. I have an infinity somewhere in there. So now I define y and z 
as this mesh grid. And let me again come down here and put a bunch of uh, comments in so we can look at what mesh grid is doing. Okay, and let me, so I have that. Let me print uh, Y and Z. And if you can see, I'm going to make my number of points again. We'll comment out 16. We'll make it, I don't know, 4 for right now. Okay. Uh, what you can see here, let me separate these two into two different parts. Print Z. Is that this goes minus 4, minus 4 thirds, plus 4 thirds, plus 4. Okay, and this one varies in the other direction. All right, so now they're all not zero, but this is, again, just replicating those, those parts. Um, but notice that this one goes down the, the rows, and this one goes across the columns. So here, my common value is down the column, and here my common value is across the rows. So that's what mesh grid does really nice for me. So now I have points minus 4, minus 5.333, and then I also have a point minus 1, minus 0.533, etc. So this is defining the y and z coordinates of my entire grid. Okay, so if I come back here and if I set up my uh, quiver plot, um, I'm going to, uh, I, I won't show you what that is, but basically this is just defining the y and z points across every point on that grid, which is again what this needs. It defines the locations of those arrows to draw. All right, so that's what mesh grid's doing. So now what I'm doing here is I'm switching coordinates. So I defined these coordinates in x and y, but my formula for flow around a sphere turns out is in spherical coordinates. So that's also why I had to define an x value. And what I do here is I calculate r um, using uh, transitioning coordinates, okay? Um, and I don't want R to be zero, so uh, I'm kind of careful about that. And I go through and I calculate theta and phi from my R, and then I calculate V in the R direction and V in the theta direction, and then I have to go back into the coordinates for the Cartesian coordinates. And again, this step, all this stuff in here, that's not important. That's what I did so I can make a nice plot for you, but I'm just explaining what it is there. And now here I have uh, the figure, and I'll explain what these different pieces do. So again, I define a figure. This has a high DPI, 600 uh, dots per inch, uh, to give a nice resolution. I set the axis to be equal so that the Y and Z axis are equally scaled so that I get a circle instead of an ellipse. Um, and then I put quiver in. And again, I have the Y and Z, which are the locations of the dots of where their arrows are going to start, and then V and W define the direction and the length of the arrows and then scale here adjusts how big the it's sort of a factor that changes how big my arrows are relative to each other i can show you what that does here in a second width changes the size of my arrowhead this sets my color etc and then i put a circle in there so you can see it i think it adds some nice contrast and then i add labels and i plot the figure so if i show this if i run it um, now you can see here uh, that again, notice that I turned the number of points down to just four, that I've plotted um, these arrows at just one, two, three, four points, one, two, three, four points. Okay, and you can see that I made it square, so even though this goes from minus seven and a half to seven and a half, this goes from minus four to four, okay, if I take away the plot axis equal, what you can see is that it fits it all in, but now my circle's not a circle, it's an ellipse, even though, uh, you know, uh, I'm going from minus 4 to 4, etc. So that's why I have that plot axis equal. So now I can go ahead and rescue my figure if I come back up here and uh, remake my plot, and I get something nice and pretty. And I can make it even more dense if I want to. Instead of doing 16, I could do 20. And I get this really nice, pretty figure where everything's showing. So this is the flow field around a, around a sphere in one of the planes. You can see it comes in along this direction, okay, and it's about uniform out here, and then it has to deform and go around the sphere and move. And this should look similar to you to the pictures that we made uh, in, or that I showed you in class when we were talking about drag. Okay, so I think that's all I had to show you.